Ashley Anderson here, registered dietitian and personal trainer, here to bring you our dressed up vegetable day today. So who says kids are the only ones that can play dress up? We are going to be first starting off with our first recipe with our blanched and saute. So this is actually the finished product. We've got asparagus, we've got our snow peas, and we've got our zucchini mixed in with a nice oregano and then some salt and pepper. So very simply seasoned, but a lot of green coloring here for our nice rich vitamin K dish. So the first thing that we're going to do for this dish is we're going to come over here and we are going to blanch our peas, our snow peas, and our asparagus. So what blanching does, and likely you've been in a restaurant where you get that nice crispy crunch to your vegetables and it has a really vibrant green color. When we blanch our vegetables, it's such a brief time or a brief period that the vegetables are in the boiling water so all the nutrients stay locked in. So we're gonna put the, the veggies in here and let it boil for three minutes. So we're gonna set our timer Anywhere from one to three minutes, it really depends on the vegetable, but we want, it, we want to get the vegetables out of the water before it starts to discolor. So before we start to see that change, like as if you were boiling for a long period of time, you would see the discoloration or the green color start to happen in the water, which means that a lot of the nutrients are then seeping out of the vegetable and then into your water base. So we're gonna let that simmer here for a little bit in our pot. And then after that timer goes off, we're gonna transition it right into our ice bath. So what that does is it, it locks in again the nutrients, but it stops the cooking process by putting it in a cold uh, water bath. So while we're waiting for that to cook, we're gonna come over here and talk a little bit about the next piece of this dish, which is our shallots. The shallot here looks like this, this is a half of it. Um, I've already cut up uh, half of it for you so we can see that. And I just wanna show you how to cut up the shallot here by protecting your fingers and curving your fingertips under and just go ahead and cut the shallot like this. Sometimes it can get a little slippery, so make sure that you've got a good grip and that you're away from your fingertips. And then bunch it all together, get it off the, the knife, and you can place your hand on top and just kind of roll the knife over the top, up and over the little pieces of the shallot. Then regather again here and then knife on top, gathering it here and then going up and over and just kind of creating little small pieces. So you can see it gets smaller and smaller every time as I do this. And what that does is it really helps to release a chemical called allicin. And allicin is actually can be a chemical inhibitor when we are cooking our onions. So it's good to cook, to chop up your onions and your garlic first and let them sit out a little bit. So while we are waiting for this onion to sit, and hopefully I don't get teary-eyed here, uh, we're gonna head back over here, as now our timer is about three more seconds to go. So we're going to now take this, see that, look at that nice green color. Look how vibrant and beautiful that color is. We're gonna transition it over here into our ice bath with our asparagus and our pea pods. And then we're going to head over and cut up our zucchini so we can get that ready to go. Now the reason why I'm doing this separate is the timing here is slightly different. For the asparagus and the pea pods, it's about two minutes. And for the zucchini, we're gonna put it in for three. So just a little bit longer time frame uh, so we don't get a mushy zucchini either. So let's head back over here. Now I'm gonna cut this zucchini in angled slices, just for a little texture to kind of make the dish look pretty here. You can do it in a lot of different ways, but I'm gonna cut the zucchini this way here, first cutting off both ends, and then I'm gonna hold it down here and put it at an angle and start to see those slices look so nice and pretty. You wanna make them rather thin so you don't have too thick pieces, because if they're too thick, they're not gonna cook evenly. So make sure you've got consistency here in the way that you're cutting it. Then we're going to hop back over here and put this into our boiling pot of water. As we transition the zucchini over, we're going to start heating up our pan, which this is already on for me, so I'm gonna turn it up just a little bit. We're adding olive oil to this so we can saute our shallot in this recipe. Now, I'm keeping it at a lower heat because extra virgin olive oil, it has a low smoke point. That means that you can't cook it at high temperatures, otherwise the, the oil will start to smoke and burn, and that's what we don't want to happen. So we're gonna put the oil in our pan here, kind of mix that around, and we're gonna add the shallot now. Now we're cooking the shallot long enough for it to start to brown and become a really uh, nice color, nice tan color. 
and become very fragrant. That's what we're looking for here. So we're gonna stir this around here. And the pan is still a little bit on the cooler side. So once that gets going and you start to really smell the nice fragrance of the shallot, you're gonna know it's ready to put your vegetables in. We already have our other ones cooling over here and our zucchini is just about done. So we're gonna now transition the zucchini into um, our water bath. But before we do that, we have to get our other veggies out of the way because these are gonna go in our saute pan first before we add the zucchini in. We want our asparagus and our pea pods to cook for a little bit longer, about four minutes, and then we'll add in the zucchini for another four minutes so that the zucchini is cooking less time and the other vegetables are cooking for about eight minutes in length. So as we make that transition here, over into the pan. So you're constantly stirring that. We're gonna transition this one over into our water bath, stop the cooking process, hold in all those nutrients. You can see a little bit of the color in the water here, and that's okay. It doesn't mean we've lost everything here because it really hasn't been a long time. Another great thing about zucchini and our green rich vegetables is that they're all rich in vitamin K. And vitamin K is essential for bone health, for muscle health, for transitioning uh, or making your body utilize vitamin D as it needs to. So very, very important nutrient and also coagulation of blood too. So let's go ahead and see how these veggies are doing over here as we're gonna cook up the temperature just a little bit, not too high. And then as these cook, we are going to add in our seasonings. We've got oregano. Nice uh, fragrant seasoning here. And we're just going to lightly spread that around here. And then add a little bit of salt and pepper. And our salt in our dish here. Kind of comes out a little fast. And then stir it up. So ideally what we're gonna have is this cooking for a little bit, we're gonna wait for the zucchini to be done, and our end product is gonna look just like this. So nice and colorful here. Okay, our second dish that we're gonna be working on today is over here. We are making a raw avocado kale salad. So with this kale, this is already, this is a laconado kale. It's already been debundled or bunched off the stem. So how you do that is if you were holding onto the bottom of the stem and you just kind of slide your fingertips along the edge so that you can get it off in one follow swoop. And then I always say kale is the stubborn vegetable. It really likes to be massaged and pampered. So one of the things that we are first going to do is add a little bit of salt to our kale, and then we're gonna massage it a little bit. Okay, we're also gonna put some of that in our dressing as well. So massaging it in. Now what the salt helps here is break down some of the cell walls within the plant. So we're getting rid of some of that bitterness that is initially in kale. So if you've not liked kale in the past, and you've always said, I don't really care for it, it's too bitter for me, try giving it a good massage first and let me know how you like it next. All right, once we have our massaged kale, we're gonna go over here to our cucumber. And our salad here has some ingredients in with the, the main greens here, but then also we've got some avocado and some ingredients for our dressing. So there's gonna be avocado for the base, which is very rich in potassium, great for helping lower your blood pressure. And then also we've got some avocado chunks in our salad, which is gonna make a really nice uh, consistency and texture in comparison to the leaves themselves. So one of the things I like to do to make it look a little pretty here is you can take the edge of the cucumber and just kind of slide it along in one long straight piece. Then you turn it here, you're leaving a little space between, and then turn it again, one long piece like that. And just keep turning until you've gotten most of the green off, but still a little bit on there and that's okay. Adds a little bit of fiber. If you've got a cucumber that has a lot of wax on it, then I definitely recommend making sure you get all the green off. This one is actually really nice. Um, especially if you homegrown your cucumbers and you don't have any wax at all because you got it from your backyard, you will be able to do this process. So then we're gonna take our knife here. Let's go up here and grab. 
And with the cucumber, we're kind of going to cut it into actually long strips. So it might be a little bit different than what you're used to for the cucumber. Sometimes you cut them in circles, sometimes you cut them in long pieces. So we're going to do a little bit of a combination. I'm going to first take my hands and go at the top of the cucumber, making sure I've got a nice solid grip on it. I'm going to cut down long ways. So I've got a straight line and I, then I'm always going to put the flat side down. I always want to make sure that safety wise, we're making sure that the vegetable is not going to roll around on us. Okay, then I'm going to take the end here. I've put my fingertips like this so that I get to the end of the cucumber and I'm just going to push the cucumber along, keeping the knife in the same spot and make some half moons here. You can do this in many different ways. You can create different shapes that you like. You can create a different appearance with your salad and that's what it'll look here. So let's add the cucumbers to this dish and start to make it look pretty. Now notice we've got a lot of green today. So green is the theme, but we're also gonna add in some purple. Now purple onions have a chemical called anthocyanin and any of our very rich purple fruits and vegetables have high antioxidants, which help to again, reduce inflammation in the body, reduce blood pressure. So it's really great to have a variety of colors, not just green in your meals. So with this onion, I'm going to cut off the end pieces here. And then I'm gonna also make slits. So we're gonna do little slivers. I've got this onion that's already half cut, so I'm gripping it here like this, and I'm going to put little cuts in it along the way. So we're making slices that are gonna fan out and make a really, really pretty appearance here. So just be, always be careful of your fingers. And if you're getting too close here, then maybe just turn it to the side. So let's take some of these. We're gonna fan it out and just sprinkle it along the salad. Look at that pretty color, it just looks really nice. And add it to the dish here. All right, so for our dressing, we've got a few ingredients. We have our avocados, like I mentioned before. We have some lemon and lime juice that I already squeezed here. So we're gonna add that. We're gonna add some of our seasoning here as well as our paprika. We're gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper to this dressing and about a half a teaspoon. I'm just kind of shaking it on here a little bit. I can eyeball this about a half a teaspoon. Get to the point where you know how many rotations it is to get to be that amount. And same thing too for the pepper. Now, if you like a little bit more of a kick to it, feel free to add a little bit more pepper. I like mine a little bit more subtle on the pepper side, so I just add a little bit of, to the dressing. And then we've got our mustard here, which will add a half a teaspoon and then put that in, we're gonna blend it. And once we have all of this blended nice together, we're gonna add this to our dressing. Okay, so we've got one stubborn avocado, so we're gonna shake it up a little bit, put it back on, make sure we've got our type top on tight, there we go. So you wanna blend it so it has that really nice smooth consistency, just like a dressing wood that you would get from the store. Sometimes you gotta go backwards to go forward here. There we go, we got it. Now one more thing I always get asked is how do you cut up an avocado? So we're gonna go through that before we put this on our salad so you can see what that looks like and learn a new method on how to do that today. So I've got my avocado here. And a lot of times you'll see, as far as testing your avocado, you wanna kinda of push into it and get a, make sure it has a little give to it. But as far as cutting it up, it's a circular object, object. so it can be very uh, crucial to make sure that it doesn't slip or slide out of your hand. So we're going to take the avocado, we're gonna put it down on the cutting board. I'm gonna have you cut along one side and we're just gonna roll it. I'm gonna have you roll it, roll it. You want a really large knife for this. Then you put your knife down so it's safe. You're gonna pick up your avocado and you're gonna twist. And once you twist, you have this pit in the middle. Now you can grab it with your fingertips. Another method too would be to take a spoon and kind of dig along the side and then scoop it out. So that's what we did for our avocado, just scooping it out. And then one of the ways too that you can also uh, make a really pretty cutout is you just be careful with your fingers is you kind of cut along here and make little slits. Just don't dig too deep. And then I'm gonna turn it and cut this way. And then I'll take a spoon, 
go underneath here. And that's exactly what I did to make this bowl here. So you can see all the nice little chunks and pieces of avocado kind of separated out. This one was a little bit harder. You want your avocados to be a little bit more soft so that you have a little bit softer consistency. All right, let's add our dressing to our salad here. We're gonna pour this over. It's a pretty thick dressing, so it does take a little bit to come out of here. And then once we get this going, we are going to mix up the dressing and then spread that all over our finished product here and have a nice summer salad. There we go. This is a great salad to bring to parties. Not one that I would leave in the sun for a long period of time though, because you've got the avos, avocados that are gonna start to turn color. Luckily though, you have the vitamin C coming from the lemon and lime juice. So that's gonna help to keep the color from turning. But we already did put a little paprika in here. So you're, that's why you see the color of the avocado slightly different than the avocados over here. So now we're just gonna mix that up to make sure we've got a nice good consistency and coverage with the dressing. And sometimes when I do this, after, you know, before I go to a party or before I bring a dish anywhere, sometimes in the actual dish you make it, it starts to get really messy. So if you want your appearance to be a little bit more neat, you can then put it in another bowl or wipe down the sides of your bowl so that you have a better appearance for your guests. So these are your two recipes for today, your avocado kale salad and your blanche and saute recipes over here. Hope you enjoyed this kitchen edition for the community kitchen here at Delmar Hospital.